Good morning, everyone. Welcome once again to the Winwood Buddhist Temple's virtual Dharma Remembrance Service. So today we will be remembering those loved ones who have passed away in the month of December. I will ring the Daiking after each name is read and then go immediately to the chanting of Jusei Ye, which is found on page 54 of the Jodo Shinshu service book. We will begin the service with the chanting of Vandana and Tisarana on page 7 of the Red Service Book. Namo tassa bhagavato arahato samman sambudasa homage to him the exalted one, the enlightened one, the supremely awakened one, Buddham Saranam Gachami Dhamma Saranam Gachami Sangam Saranam Gachami I go to the Buddha for guidance I go to the Dharma for guidance I go to the Sangha for guidance Namo Abhidavus Namo Oh. 
presence of Amida Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, and all the Buddhas of the Ten Directions to this remembrance of us. Namo Amida Buddha. Tadahiko Inaba. Asuno Asada Shizue Hirota Hisano Nishita Oh, she's 
在修送，心肝也高卡，来生我看到我可修天年，脱尽妙苦。Today's recitation is Shinshu Pledge One, and this is also found in the Red Service Book on page six. Let's put our hands together. I take my refuge in the vow of the Buddha. Reciting the name, I will live through life with strength and serenity. I revere the light of the Buddha. I will put my effort in my work with self-reflection and gratitude. I follow the teachings of the Buddha, discerning the right path. I will spread the true Dharma. I rejoice in the compassion of the Buddha. I will respect and help others, and do my best for the welfare of humankind. Namo Amida Butsu. Namo Amida Butsu. Good morning. I hope you all had a wonderful Christmas gathering with your family and friends for the first time. Since COVID-19 happened, thank you for joining us for this morning's service. Please put your hands together in Gashō. Listen by Reverend Kenyu Tsuji in the heart of the Buddha Dharma. Listen, listen to the voice of the Dharma. Listen to the birds singing in the morning, the wind sighing in the boughs overhead. And the roar of the waves on the beach. Listen to the rain on the roof, and the snow falling in the fields. The Dharma speaks to us through the sounds of the world, forcefully and eloquently and beautifully. It speaks to the unending change around us and the peace in nature. Do we have the ears to hear and listen? Listen to the nembutsu in the hondo. Listen to the noble silence of the Buddha. Namo Amida Butsu. The COVID-19 and the addition of the Delta and Omicron variants. Have changed our lives dramatically, and the climate change that we are witnessing is also adding to this burden on us. The tornadoes, typhoons, dry areas that would normally rain during certain months of the year, and the loss of sea ice that is happening around various parts of our world. An example of the loss of rain. 
that was not available at all are the Joshua trees and small plants that I saw in California. Like many of you, Ron and I spent most of our time at home and go out to buy food for our meals, pick up our medication, and do other errands as necessary. In the poem, Listen, Reverend Kenry Utsuji wrote that we should listen to the sounds around us and appreciate the peace it brings and reminds us of the constant changes around us, the interdependence and the peace in nature. An example of this are two photos that were taken by Chaz Photography, the Lanikai Sunrise and the Botanical Park. These show us the beauty of nature and its interdependence with us. We can enjoy the beauty that nature shares with us, and in turn, we help to keep them healthy and safe. The following are photos that I took. Nature really allows us to take care of them and enjoy them. The beautiful flowers enhance our appreciation of its beauty and fragrance, if it has any. They also provide food with its nectar that the bees and butterflies can enjoy, such as the basil and other flowers. And the crown flower plants and the milkweed provide food for the monarch butterflies. Both the bees and butterflies help us by pollinating plants that we may use for our food. We share the interdependence with other plants and animals too. We're able to have food to eat, the many plants, vegetables, and nuts that provide us nourishment that we need to survive and stay healthy. We are lucky there are that many places, such as Times, Safeway, Marukai stores, or department stores that have a food department, such as Costco. Animals such as dogs provide us companionship and are also helpers. My, sister do my sister's dog barks to let her know that someone is coming to the door or barks to let her know that a friend is at the door. On a TV program, I saw the story of dogs at the hospital used to help young children take the COVID vaccination or to just visit young children who have injuries or other health issues and need to stay in the hospital for a long period of time. I am grateful to the many people who have helped and supported me. There are many of our temple members who make it possible to have our temple serving our community and state. The activities such as memorial services or funeral services and seminars the Tai Chi, Ikebana, exercise, and drama study classes. Other member associate classes, such as meditation, Japanese language, Hanafuda card game, are some that were held prior to the COVID-19 pandemic. The Kiwanis Club has members of our temple, and they hold their meetings and help with our temple activities. Some of our members are also connecting with others in the community, such as helping at Kailua Elementary School, other Kailua organizations, and the Family Promise Program. In the fall, the torch for the GF, or the Go For Broke National Education Center, there is an article about two Italian citizens who are thankful for the 100th Infantry Battalion and the 442nd Regimental Combat Team. The first is Riccardo Malavolti of Laverno, Italy. The 442nd liberated his town on the 19th of July, 1944. He has been a longtime supporter and the follower of GFBNEC's activities and programming, which have become more globally accessible during the pandemic. The newly merged 100th Infantry Battalion 
and the 442nd Regimental Combat Team fought a grueling three-week battle in the summer of 1944. As the 100th and 400th crossed over the rolling hills, the Germans could easily see them approaching from their hilltop observation points they had. With the objective of capturing Hill 140, the 100th and the 22nd battalions led the attack while the Germans fired their mortars and artillery shells with devastating accuracy, wounding all the officers of G Company except one. At the front line, hundreds of infantry men fought enemy fire and protected each other. This battle for Hill 140 was one of the toughest fights for the 100th and 442nd to the point where it was nicknamed Little Casino. With all the units working together with great efficiency, including 232nd Combat Engineering Company who swept for mines and the 502nd, 2nd, 22nd, sorry, Field Artillery Battalion who fired accurately to protect the infantry. The 100th and 442nd finally captured Hill 140 after heavy artillery shelling. The commitment of this young man to honoring the Nisei soldiers who gave their lives is unwavering every year. He visits the Florence American Cemetery and the grave sites of the fallen Japanese American soldiers donning a 142nd Gopher Brook hat. Malavoti shares why he has commend, committed himself to the story of the Nisei soldiers and continues to remember the lives of those young men who never returned home to their families. About five years ago, he began to investigate the history of the advance of American troops during July of 1944 in the vicinity of Livorno. He says he's always been passionate about history. For the Second World War, I had only little information about my area. But what he did, he had a complete picture of the events that took place in that distant July 1944. He said he looked for material on the internet, photos, maps, and reports of the time. He said the most consistent material he obtained was from the National Archives and Records Administration. He said when he got them, he, starts, he studied them in detail, mainly the part from July 1st to July 19, or from the liberation of Cecina, which was 38 kilometers south of Livorno, to the liberation of Livorno. He said, I also helped myself with the use of a metal detector to retrieve any evidence left by the events. While he was studying it, he was struck by the story of Hill 140. He said, four days of fighting. He said, I didn't think there had been such a violent battle in my area. From July 3rd to July 6th, southwest of Castellina Matana, and I'm sorry if I mispronounced it, the 142nd Regimental Combat Team faced one of the bloodiest battles of the Second World War. He said, he found testimonies of Nisei soldiers speak of the constant fear of German sniper fire and the characteristic sound of heavy machine guns, which was they called the infamous MG42, a machine gun designed in Nazi Germany. And so of course they spent their nights in foxholes and they were hand-to-hand -hand fights. And so he said, he spoke to some of the old men in his town and he said they were surprised and did not understand why there were Japanese soldiers together with the US Army. He said the price paid by these veterans was immense and is testified by the huge number of crosses as well as other religious symbols. War cemeteries remind us that there was a time when men came from afar with ethnic characteristics, their customs, their language, their affections, their youth, and landed in this land to restore peace and freedom to us, leaving their lives in memory. 
My thanks and my eternal gratitude go to the Nisei brothers who in July of 1944 were walking through the wrecked streets of my city and who knew the sufferings of a destroyed city. Thank you, thank you America, God bless you, is what he said. So that was one of them. The other person was a reenactor who shares his passion for this Nisei legacy. And for 15 years, this person whose name was Francisco Rachi, he was a member of the steering committee of the historical cultural association called the Tyrrhenian Gothic Line and was based in Massa, Italy, Macy maybe, Italy. He said that since 206, he has taken part in reenacting the advance of the American military during World War II through his city, and in particular, the 100th and 442nd. His association included 40 members, participants in recreating the advance with incredible accuracy and attention to detail, including their own original military jeeps, dodges, and other vehicles. Can you beat that? Wow. He said his fondness for the Nisei store extended to meeting descendants of the veterans while they toured the sites. And of course, this is where their loved ones once fought. He said, I cannot forget meeting in 2015 in Massa with members of the Nisei families who participated in a tour in Italy, where on that occasion, I met Lynn Stuart Hurai, David Furukawa, David Nishitani, Jasper Bond, and many others. He said, April of 1945, the US troops broke through the Gothic line, freeing the city of Massa, or Massa. In the stories of our ancestors, the memory of the heroic deeds of the 100th, 442nd has been handed down. Their actions contributed significantly to the advance of the Allied troops. So he said, after September 8, 1943, the day of the surrender of the Italian army to the Anglo-American troops, he said, my paternal grandfather was part of the Cremona Division Combat Group, a unit of the reconstituted Italian army that fought alongside the British troops on the Adriatic side of the Gothic line. The rest of the family remained in the occupied area on a daily basis and suffered the privations of those dramatic moments of war. These facts are always in the memory of my father, born in 1939. He said, as a reenactor and member of the association, he said, I participate with my Jeep in vintage uniform and reenact the liberation of 1945 with columns of vehicles that move in the various localities that were liberated by American troops. Every year, we set up a military camp on the original site of the Gothic line. He said they dressed in his historical uniforms, welcoming visitors to the camp, and explains the events, local history, and the Nisei story in, of World War II. In honor of the Nisei soldiers, our group applies their patches to our uniforms. And of course, this is, he says, their way to thank those young soldiers who fought for our, and perhaps even their own freedom. And of course, the thing he says is, the dramatic restrictions that Japanese Americans experience in the US after Pearl Harbor have touched our hearts as a pride and determination shown by the Nisei soldiers in contributing to the war effort ended with them being one of the most decorated fighting groups in the United States Army. He said, we were equally struck by the passion for the bond shown by the descendants of these young men who have been crossing the ocean for many years to come and pay homages to their ancestors by coming to visit places that saw them as protagonists. And he says, we can never thank those young soldiers enough for the precious gift they gave us. Even today, we can see interdependence between people of different cultures and countries, even people who were there during World War II. It is so very nice to meet people of different cultures, 
even today. Ron and I met Damon, a friend of our daughter's, whose family is from Belize. He makes and sells ice cream, sorbet, and some vegan ones following family recipes at Pops Artisanal Creamery. They are not extra sweet as the US one, USA ones are, so it's really good and delicious. He also makes delicious breakfast dishes that we are planning to try the next time we visit our daughter. The photo shows him scooping the ice cream with his mask on. I asked him to take off the mask for the photo of him standing so I could have the name of the store in the photo. I am thankful for all the wonderful people, plants, and animals that make my life as healthful and enjoyable today. This is the last service for this year. And in a few days, it will be 2022. How many of you make resolutions to say that I am going to do this? Well, I want to read you a paper that has some of that. If you want a reality check, look in the mirror. Better yet, take a picture. You'll really see yourself. Don't like what you see? Work on changing it. If you want to see how healthy you are, write down everything you eat in a day. Breakfast, drink, snack, lunch, snack, dinner, drink, snack, etc. Look at the list. Practically everyone knows what's healthy and what's not. Not eating healthy? Make some changes. If you want to see how often and how long you really exercise, write it down. Then you will see how much time and how often you really exercise. Not spending enough time for exercising? Start. If you don't have enough time in a day to get things down, write down everything you do in a day by hour and minutes. Then you can see where you are wasting part of your little 24 hours we have in a day, seven days in a week, 12 months in a year, and years of your hopefully long life. Prioritize. And the last is, eat a little healthier. Spend a little more time exercising. Make time to sleep at least eight hours a day. Cut a little time here and there for your health. It's you. Without your health, life can be a bit harder. Please turn to the back of our brown book for our pledge. Our pledge, reaching out to others, I will share a smile and gentle words, just like the Buddha who always calls out with aloha. Breaking away from my greed, anger, and ignorance, I will try to live in peace and harmony, just like the Buddha who shares tranquility and kindness with all. Moving forward from self-centeredness, I will share a life of joy and sorrow with others. Just like the Buddha, whose caring heart always embraces us. Realizing that I live because of others, I will strive to live life to the fullest with an attitude of gratitude. Just like the Buddha, who promised to embrace us all. Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas, Namo Amidabhas. We will conclude today's service with the Gatha, May Peace Prevail, followed by the Nembutsu.
shared equally with all beings. May we together awaken the Bodhi mind and be born in the realm of peace and serenity. Namo Amida Butsu. Well, thank you very much for attending this virtual Remembrance Day service. And we hope to see you live next month, next month in January. The second week, the second Sunday in January is going to be our first live service. In the meantime, don't forget to come and visit us on New Year's Eve anytime between 4 and 6 p.m. to ring the bell outside for New Year's. And then also don't forget to come to New Year's Day between 9 and 11 to offer incense and have a bit of sake as well. Thank you and be well.